and welcome to your weekly podcast from Freestyle Media uh, in partnership with The Magic Five, uh, where you can get 15% off a pair of their custom fit goggles by using the link in the description to this episode. Uh, I'm also keen to promote Oxalt Strength and Conditioning. Um, so Nathan, Nathan's been on the podcast a few times uh, and he offer, offers personalized strength and conditioning programs for athletes, including swimmers. Um, he's been a really high level swimmer himself, so he understands swimming, he knows what it takes to race fast. Um, and he's successfully working with a number of master swimmers as we speak. Um, so you can go over to his website. That's uh, www.oxalt.com. I think I said four W's there. It's just three, as you know. Um, and you can also follow him on social media and see what he has to offer. Um, but here we are. Look, it's Saturday evening. I think we're all a bit uh, all a bit tired after a long week. Um, but I'm, I'm really pleased to be joined once more by Beth Hogg. Uh, it's nice to have you back on. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> I'm very well. We've had a shaky start to say the least. A very what shaky. No one can hear, or what people might be able to hear is like the kind of three minutes of like chaos that has just absolute chaos. Yeah, precluded this. So yeah, it was, uh, it was the equivalent of like a race warm up when there's just like twenty people in a lane trying to warm up, and you're all just jumping on top of each other. It was just yeah, that's version of that. It's like what your dream race warm up looks like versus what actually it's like. Ah! Yeah. It's like yeah, in, Instagram versus reality for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. I'm just slightly unhinged because uh, Newcastle are about to play City, and uh, I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, big night. I, I've I've come back off the relief that Liverpool managed to win. Uh, Newcastle are playing later, so we're squeezing this into the middle somehow. Uh, so we'll try we'll try and get through this. Um, but I want to start by talking about. Um, the state of play with competitions because, um, I mean, I moved up to the Midlands in January. So my radar has changed uh, this year in terms of, you know, I can access more areas of the country uh, rather than being down the Southeast. So I've certainly noticed the amount of competitions that there are uh, available to people now, probably because I never used to really look for them. I used to just have the ones that we did down in the South and then I'd come up and do nationals once a year as well. But I really have noticed how many there are, and I've seen a few posts, obviously, on the Masters um, Facebook group recently of people saying how great it is to see so many sort of competitions throughout the year. I guess my question to you is when you are, like, I don't know, just like planning your year ahead, what's the kind of the ideal number of competitions that you would like to do? I think it just depends on availability and like what I'm doing in like normal life. So usually there's, you know, your kind of competition timetable is sort of dictated by family events birthdays and other holidays that you have and maybe some stuff to do with your career as well like work trips I know Mm. that a lot of my competition calendar has been affected because of work before but I think um sorry there's a lot of horns beeping because of the match traffic um no worries We're, we're all getting in the spirit but yeah but yeah I think um I think ideally, like, I think like six or seven is good because yeah. you have kind of your big ones, and then it's just nice to kind of pepper in between, like, with smaller competitions. I think if I could do more, I could at the minute. Yeah. I really enjoy racing, and I, I think racing is kind of the biggest kind of crux with swimming with me. I think being out of it for so long. I think it's try. I'm trying to like really work on like the race mentality and like getting really like kind of bulletproof behind the blocks mentally and like not yeah. psyching myself out. So I think the more smaller competitions I can do, the better. Obviously, like love nationals. Everything about revolves around nationals at the minute, especially for Trafford as well. So I think I would say like six, six to eight. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of where I've landed this year. I think I've got seven. Um kind of written down but I may end up doing one or two more at the back end of the year as well which I I wouldn't normally do like normally for me after nationals I'm like well traditionally over the last five or six years I normally don't do a lot um we obviously did the Etwell one last November which was really fun and that was good yeah I I, I plan to do that again so and I know that there are some coming up in December as well so I probably will just keep my hand in this time but it is interesting because I know I know a few people who race maybe like twice maybe three times a year and they actually like that they don't do too much because they quite enjoy, say, for example, having three or four months of training where they're not necessarily going to be absolutely on it in training every week. They actually quite like maybe racing, having a week or two off, mm-hmm. slowly getting back into it, then having maybe a couple of months under their belt of decent training, ready for a competition, 
And then I know other people who would literally race every weekend if they could, because yeah. that's what keeps them motivated to train. It's what keeps them. And like you say, you, you want to get that like bulletproof mentality for racing, yeah. but I guess, uh, you know, so, so that's something I suppose you have to, to practice it, 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 interestingly in your training. So like you have a sprint night, for example, which, and I, I guess you go off the block a lot. Do you yeah. ever, do you ever kind of, um, does Bob ever get you guys doing like a right, pretend you're in a race environment now you're in the sort of like, you're waiting at the sides for your heat. Do you kind of ever do any of that improvisation? Well, we, we kind of do that without really saying kind of on a Thursday, Sunday, we do speed as well, but that's kind of more, it's more race pace speed rather than just like flat out sprinting. But I mean, we did like a bit of a kind of a lactate builder speed session on Thursday. But yeah, we all kind of wait on the side and then we go up and in heats and nice. Uh, obviously we're all doing different strokes sometimes. But um yeah, we kind of go up on the blocks and we like wait, but it's kind of all I think we're like having too much fun to really take it as seriously as a race. So I mean I I am usually like dancing on the side of the pool. Um <laughs> And everyone is like looking at me like I've grown three heads, but I'm like dancing, just having fun because we get the music out and it's it's like really fun. So you say that like it's a bad thing, though. I think that sounds like a great it, point of conversation. I think since the introduction of um, the 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 playlist, um, we've got playlists now. Um, I think since the introduction of the playlist, sprinting has become far more popular. I'm not going to say that was down to me, but, you know. <laughs> Who's, who sets the playlist? That's important. Do you have any... Well, I started it. Start. It was me, obviously, Queen. Um, <laughs> so it's usually like me and since I've been uh, doing a bit more volume at the minute, so I've been doing kind of the distance sets instead. It's been uh, Johnny from our club who's taken it over. But he's also pretty good. I feel like it's very different styles of music. Yeah, yeah. But um, I've definitely got a I'm Tired It's Sunday speed playlist. And then I've got a like Sunday's, which mm. is a bit happier. The nice. I'm Tired one's quite motivating. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, we kind of, I guess, going off the block and going in like heats and ra like racing each other, even though we're doing different strokes, that does kind of make make it sort of like a race environment but we just mm. we're just not serious enough for that at the minute. that's i i just think that's great though I, I, it's so great that you almost try and imitate what it's like to to race interestingly when, yeah. when you said that you like doing i don't know six seven eight um competitions a year mm. again ideally would you spread them out or do you like to bulk them up so say for example you you know we've got nationals in october would you like to maybe do three competitions in the space of six weeks that leads up to nationals? So you kind of like bulking a few together, ready for the big meet. Like what's your preference? I would probably like to race a lot up to about a month before. And okay. Then stop. Okay. So like get some practice in, but I don't really want to be like exerting. Cause I think competitions you, you say to yourself like oh I'm only swimming like a few meters but it really takes it out of you and like yes. it's just it is so tiring and you have to mentally recover from it as well so like if you have a bad swim or like a swim that you're not as happy with you have to kind of mentally pick yourself back up and that can be really hard especially with a three-day meet so I find that like nationals like if you go off and your first race is not what you wanted I think that's quite hard to recover mm -hmm. from so I like to give myself I'd, I'd like to give myself a lot of time so this year I've got two meets like a week apart but I'm actually doing different events yes yeah, so it's almost like one extended event really isn't it yeah but they're, they're one day competition so you're only swimming for one day so mm -hmm. it's not as much load on you yeah um and you kind of and then you can kind of recover like a little bit in the week but also like it's not like I'm going to take my training down either I'm just going to see where I'm at yeah and it's just for practice I mean there's some events that I am going to do twice as practice but that's because I just want to get it right because I have less yeah. experience in the events aren't they yeah yeah no that makes sense so there's um speaking of all the competitions that are 
are around in the calendar throughout the year. There, there has been a few new ones um, kind of brought to the table recently. So there's the city of Sheffield are offering yep. uh, an open meet. I think it's sort of three, four weeks before nationals and it's at Ponds Forge, which is yeah. very fantastic because that gives people the opportunity to get up there and actually experience the pool as well as get some race practice. Yeah. And yeah, I think that will be such a good meet. And I actually think that will be super competitive as well. I yeah. think you'll be racing a lot of people, especially because... Ponds Forge is quite accessible to quite a few regions. I'm not going to say all regions. Obviously, it's like it is a bit of a slog. I, I do agree, though, especially London. city centre right near the train as well. Makes that also makes a difference. Yeah, but I do think you kind of you are kind of really close to like you are kind of yeah. It's a good public transport to, mm. from a lot of regions. So I think there will be a lot of swimmers coming up, down, across for that just to get yeah. some practice. And I always feel like short course is um really competitive especially yeah. compared to long course i think like long course is really competitive but short course is super super competitive i think because it's in like the same place every year it doesn't move it's kind of like the competition like everyone comes out the woodwork for it like it's obviously 24 meters that's a bit easier well not easier but easier <laughs> Yeah, I agree, I, and and I think you're right about it. it's the it's the competition because I know there's obviously yeah. British British Masters every year as well. Which and there will be people out there who say that that's their main one. We, we've had people go out to the worlds, the Europeans, yeah, the, uh, yeah, to, uh, the uh, what? Well, yeah, there was one over in Finland recently. What was that called again? Oh yeah, the European Masters Games in Tampa. Games. Of course it was. Yeah, and um, yeah. So so for some people. I guess they might be the key events because it's going abroad and they're investing a lot of time and money. But yeah. I do feel like Nationals is the concentrated one where everything just turns up and is like, this is the yeah. one I'm going for. Yeah, I think like, I, I didn't really know kind of what the situation with Worlds was. It did end up being, it looked like it ended up being like quite pretty super competitive. Yes. Um, yeah. Even though it was quite far away. But yeah, obviously people, a lot of people in England, like we don't have like access to we don't have the time or the money to like go over to Japan for like two weeks. So it's a, commitment. Yeah. It's, a, it's a massive commitment. Like I really wanted to this year, but um, like couldn't just because of like work commitments, like degree commitments. So um, yeah, I think it is like, I think cause it's so accessible. Cause Sheffield is so accessible and it's the half term mm -hmm. weekend as well. So yeah, it's always timed well, isn't it? It's yeah, it's been done very well and for a good reason. And I think mm -hmm. it really pays off. You get a, immense quality of swimming as well yeah and i think without w wishing to make this the national show because that's that's not what it is but they seem to improve every year as well and and you know as i talked to, to jonathan about recently on the podcast there are more new things that are coming in this year and i just feel like it's um you know a standard open meet in a in a region in the country it doesn't need to be super you know it just needs to be nice and simple you turn up you do your races you've got your volunteers there you've got the pool for the day that's great but i do feel like nationals they up the game every year in terms of the organization of it what's available to people and i think that also piques people's interest as well yeah and definitely because you're getting feedback from basically the whole nation as yes. well you're getting so many swimmers that have an opinion and you obviously want to try and make it obviously you can't make everyone like happy at the same time but you want to try and make as many people as happy as possible so you want to take things on board i think yeah the organizers they're just like they're like listening and trying to make that a best experience possible for everyone so yeah it is a good competition yeah but sheffield as a warm-up meet will be yeah. really good i think it'll be really well subscribed and mm. exciting and also you get to see everyone not just at nationals yeah, so. that's so true yeah, yeah. it's, it's even almost though, um... even though i will see uh i will see jonathan in uh, early september in club of santa <laughs> Ah, there you go. But yeah, yeah it, it it very much feels like the uh, the warm up, doesn't it? Or, or sort of yeah. the dress rehearsal to, to the nationals. Event. Yeah, absolutely. So it's um no, it's fantastic that they've got it. Another race that's been or another competition, sorry, that's been announced um literally in the last few days is the AP race. Um, obviously, oh, yeah. I had Ed Baxter on the podcast recently um to talk about their international meet that they had uh, yeah. at the London Aquatics that Masters could enter uh, yeah. but this is specifically a master competition and it's in derby mm -hmm. it's at more ways the fantastic pool in more ways yeah. um there aren't details uh, on it yet i'm actually lying somebody to come on the podcast to talk about that in the next few weeks so we will hear more Ooh. um i'm not sure if it's long course or short course but it actually mm -hmm. clashes with the 
a long-standing at Wall Eagles competition that obviously yeah. you and I were at last year. And I know that's been for many years, people love it. And I have seen yeah. a few people, of course, on Facebook say they're going to kind of remain loyal to the at Wall Gala. But it yeah. will be interesting because if they decide to make this Masters meet a long course meet, that's fantastic because those that prefer long course can go and do that. Those that prefer short course can go and do do at war. So it could work out a great option. If they're both short course, it's a bit of a shame. Yeah, I think you kind of, you are like splitting the crowd really. Um, I think it maybe it will appeal to different swimmers. I think a lot of people will want kind of to go to one of those like big events like AP race, but some people like do, mm. I mean, we had a, great time at Etwell Eagles last last year it was hilarious yeah, because brilliant. I don't think I don't know I don't think either you or me had any like sublime swims but it was like good yeah. bands the whole the whole day so it was a good day wasn't it good day. Yeah. yeah and like I got up so early and like it was a bit of a slog to get there because <laughs> Manchester's actually further from Derby than you think but yes it was so good like it was so worth it and like even though I think everyone is like coming off the back of you know nationals and everyone is like probably quite tired and wants just wants to kind of wind down for Christmas and start eating mince pies and stuff like that um I just thought <laughs> it was really good and I just had a great time like regardless so yeah yeah Fun. seems to remember as well it was um freezing cold I seem to remember like it's one of the first yeah. times I've ever stood on a poolside it was cold through the vents on the where the seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, something that I quite like uh, the thought of now about having competitions at the end of the year after nationals yeah. is that what I can do is maybe look at those races that I don't normally do. So, yeah. so at nationals, I'm doing all I'm going to. Oh, I plan to do all the races that I consider to be the ones that I enjoy the most and that I want to be competitive in. Yeah. Um, but for example, for me personally, a 200 IM is something that I rarely do but I like to maybe do once a year it's just so that I've got time. And then say, for example, if British masters come around next year and I think, do you know what? I just fancy doing a 200 IM. I can, I can qualify hopefully for it because I've, yeah. I've had time in the last 12 months. So yeah. I think having a couple of those competitions later on gives you the opportunity to just have a few swims that you don't normally do like at all last year. Yeah. Well, I said, I'd do that about the 400 IM. So I did the 400 <laughs> IM at Cheshire's with three and a half weeks out of the pool. And um no. The 400 IM is not going to feature on my racing repertoire anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Hel Helen Gorman. I was in the heat with Helen Gorman. Everyone, there was two heats. Everyone pulled out the first heat. Um, I was in the heat with Helen Gorman. I was in like the end lane. She's in like the middle lane. Yeah. And like she put it on a, I think she got a, like, she got a British record. And yeah, she put it on her Instagram. She put it on her Instagram. Yeah. And you can just see in the, you can just see in the end lane like me die. <laughs> What, what's um what's funny is I, I was watching the video that she put on Instagram and I was like oh so impressed and then I started to look along the lane and I was like Beth is that you <laughs> it was but a fly but a cry but a why but oh, a die oh, and then the rest of it was just horrendous. I finished it I did not get DQ'd that is all I wanted that's all but, I wanted. um don't do 400 IM with a month out the pool, guys. It really hurts. No. I just had like nothing. I had nothing to give. The hundred fly actually at the start was really good and then mm. it went downhill treacherously from there or, or just don't do the 400 i am ever that, yeah, that'd be my I feel like if i was fit i would like it yeah well, i think it's um, i feel like because i quite enjoy the 200 yeah yeah, yeah. the 200 i am i just nice you can just get a rhythm can't you it's a long way yeah the 100 i am i find is too fast the, yes. the 200 is perfect and the 400 is too long mm. but on the yeah i agree well, Sorry, go on. Oh, no, go for it. I was just going to say also with the 100, a lot of people don't consider it a proper event. Yeah. I wish you could do it. I wish you could do it long course and like have like a little buffer zone where you can change strokes. <laughs> that would be so cool. Well, there's like, well, like a five metre yeah. kind of like part in the middle of the pool where you have to turn over at some point and, and change your stroke. Yeah. So you can't like. Oh, how can you go from your back and then turning over and trying to get momentum on a breaststroke? Because that's on the wall, isn't it? Because it's fifty meters, right? So you you you're at the end of fifty meters. Oh and yeah, sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of the medley relay. You're on. Yeah, yeah, sorry, the way around, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So you do the turn, the back breast turn, but it's like if you have like yeah 
the like say you have to go past like say you like have to go like at least there's like has to be this like two meter gap at 25 like make this five meter you have to change mm. joke like within the five meters i think that would be hilarious that would be, That'd be so funny that would be hilarious there'd be so many dqs so many people guess, would turn too soon or everyone too late, everyone would be... doesn't want to do backstroke no one wants to do yeah. breaststroke no, it like, would be you'd end up with like say, 30 people enter the event, 15 end up DQ'd, and then the other 15 just like scrape by or something. Yeah, no one gets a PB. But, um, no, yeah, no one gets a PB. They never happen. Yeah, but I also find that when you were saying like events that you don't usually do um, and other co- competitions are like a really good opportunity, um, I was really, like, especially for decathlon as well, you know, like the Masters decathlon. Mm-hmm. Like, good small point. dollars are good so point. important. Mm-hmm to do to do like decathlon points yeah. because you have to do you you're basically forced to do events that you're not good at unless you're literally good at everything um it's true yeah and, and no yeah. no ones. i mean every, there are people out there that are great swimmers but yeah not everybody loves not everybody can be great at every event is just the stimulus is too different yeah the decathlon is is great for me because it really i think it really benefits people that are all right at everything but not like brilliant yeah. at one thing <laughs> So that's kind of me. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll I'm... try anything, and I'm like, I'll do any event, like all right, but I'm not really specialised. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fair. Just on the point of um, the AP race, if it is a long course meet, which yeah. I'm kind of hoping it is, because more ways is uh, it's a 50 meter pool, so it'd be a shame yeah. to kind of hold an event there and it not be 50 meters. Definitely. I imagine it would be as well, because when you think, when you think of the people that run, are literally run AP race, yeah, they are in tune with doing long course because that's what that's what they do um and so that kind of brings me to the point really of saying about long course because um from a master's point of view there tends to only be a couple of events a year that are long course um so actually if ap race is successful which i'm sure it will be and that's then another long course race in the calendar each year i think that's brilliant because there are a lot of people that love long course um, and even those who maybe prefer short course probably just like to mix it up a bit more. Yeah, definitely. I think I think if you've got access to a 50 meter pool, you are likely to use it as a 50 meter pool. Like hopefully they do. Hopefully they've got access yeah. to yeah. Um, the whole the whole pool, not just kind of half of it. Um, especially like I don't know what I have actually never been to more ways. So is there like a swim down pool as yeah. well? That's a good question. It, it only opened uh, just over a year ago, and um, yeah. I've also not been yet, but I do plan to go because there will be the Derbyshire Open um, Long Course Open Meet and just in December. So I plan to yes, go to this that. This is what I was going to say as well. There's the there's the Derby one. That's it. Yeah. More ways. Actually, I know people that went last year, so I'll have to ask. Mm. But um, they did that. So you know, even if it's if it's Long Course, that's like you know people get two chances to do a meet mm. in more ways which i think is sure. really good because yeah. i think especially when you get on the run-up to christmas especially in december like you are struggling to get that time and motivation to train and race so mm. i think well, that's an addition yeah that and, and i think that's where because again we talked obviously earlier about how many competitions do we like to do i'm, I'm the same as you really i quite like doing maybe six to eight but i quite yeah. like having couple of months maybe six weeks to eight weeks in the summer where i don't race at all because i know i'm going to yeah. probably be holiday maybe not train as much um or if i do train it's just a good uh opportunity to get a decent block in without you know having a race likewise at christmas mm. i definitely don't train uh, as i normally would no pools are closed for a week so there's literally nothing we yeah can do. um so again i think um it's nice to have a nice to have that break but maybe having a couple of competitions in december it keeps your training right up to the point where pools are gonna maybe ship for, for christmas yeah yeah i think i think it is good i think it keeps you going and then mm. you can kind of take that break naturally when it comes mm. um the only thing i think of is that when people do big competitions they like to have like a big break afterwards so it could yes. it could not be ideal for those people but um i usually tend to have like a week off and then i'm mm. back into it because i don't want to leave training for too long or i will um be very unmotivated to get back into the pool especially on the run-up to christmas especially yeah. after nationals yeah i know 
a lot of people, especially in my club, they like to go on holiday in November because that's okay. their like respite. So they will like train really hard all the way up into nationals. Um, they might have a short summer holiday, but then they'll go away in November because obviously mm. it's cheaper. Yes, of course. Um, and then, yeah, they have like that big break there. So I think it just like depends. Mm. No, I agree. I wanted to talk as well about kind of two things, but they're they're related and they're quite similar. And it's off the back of everything that you've just said there, basically, which is about taking a break. Hmm. Um, I thought it was, it'd be a nice time to talk about that because here we are in kind of mid to late August. Yeah. Probably lots of people have just had holidays. Maybe they're on holiday right now listening to this podcast and having a break. Um, so just the concepts of having a break and how how you deal with that while you, whilst you're on the break itself, how you deal with that afterwards. Um, and then I kind of want to tie that back into the volume competition uh, conversation, sorry, that we obviously had um, a couple of months ago on the podcast. I don't want to talk about volume specifically in terms of high volume, low volume, but more just around um, the concept of training correctly. So it kind of doesn't matter yeah. what the volume is. It's more about the you know the quality. And I know everybody knows uh, that quality is the most important thing, but then also dispel a few myths around, um, you know, if you have a couple of weeks off when you're on holiday, does it really take you then three, four weeks to get, back to shape again it, it probably mm. doesn't they probably are, are just myths but let's just start by talking about taking a break because that's something that i mean i had a holiday in may and i've not been on holiday um or i've not had a break since i've actually uh, trained right through the summer yeah but my club has just had a week off so um i think essentially it's to give the coaches um a break obviously a lot of volunteers there to give them a break and, and my master's club now we train alongside the age group club yeah um, so you do have a lot of volunteers on uh, and coaches on, on pool side. So it's been a, been an interesting week for me because it's the first time I haven't haven't had club training since I joined the club in well probably about three months ago. So what I've done is I've gone and had a couple. I wasn't going to train actually, but then I thought I'll go and go and have a couple of sessions myself. But it's been lovely because I've not put any pressure on myself to say oh, I've got to do two and a half k today or or whatever. I've just gone and thought I'm going to just do something that's really fun. And if I'm in there for twenty minutes that's fine because this is just a bit of a free hit this week so what i actually did is i went and did um uh well yesterday i did 40 25s that oh, was it just nice. on, just on yeah just on a on uh sorry on, on a minute but like the first 10 i just treated as a warm up get a feel and then i just like smashed them as fast as i could and, and i just had <laughs> i just had the best time ever <laughs> oh that's sick like that's always so like when you do like silly sets like that yeah, yeah stupid stupid set but it was amazing yeah um yeah i think so from my perspective like we trafford as a club we have like bank holidays off when the pools are closed and christmas but we actually keep training through the summer because mm -hmm. we have the um infrastructure and the volunteer power to do so but yeah if there's no coach available because obviously bob and joe are well well deserve after everything that they do for us they deserve their holiday time but usually we've got someone to cover I think people we've just managed to kind of train through the whole summer basically as masters which is really rare I think for masters clubs and we are yeah. really lucky and really fortunate um I think it's really important for all of us though to take individual breaks um because yes. you don't want to burn out it's like you, you do eventually need a break um even if you're I mean even the most elite swimmers you can see them like after worlds you've seen them kind of on holiday and it's like yeah. really refreshing to see it's like yeah they have a break as well like you have to do it just to like you know retain your humanity so mm, I think totally just agree. making sure that you're going on holiday with, like friends or family or just not mm. going anywhere and maybe having a little break from the pool or also just maybe not doing swimming but if you wanted to keep your fitness up and you were really kind of worried about not doing exercise in general is just kind of maybe do something fun for a week or two like I yeah and I think Sorry. I, like, I really enjoy um like bouldering and rock climbing sometimes so sometimes I do that instead and especially if you're kind of in a bit of a rut as well and it's the summer and you're not racing for a while I think that's like important to do something that you really enjoy and then you can fall back in love with swimming mm, I agree and I think that comes back to the point of you know perhaps this myth of if you have a couple of if you have say a week off it takes you two weeks to get back into to or get back to where you were before 
I don't, I personally don't think that's true. And I think, yeah. but what I think probably is true is that if you are going to have a break from swimming, it's still important to stay active. Now that doesn't mean you have to do really intense uh, workouts, but I guess, I guess the, if you have a week off, it takes a few weeks to get back to where you were. That probably only really applies to people who literally sit on the sofa and do nothing for two weeks. Yeah, I think mentally as well, it takes you quite a lot of time to build back up into fitness. I mean, yeah. I think we can all kind of attest to that after lockdown um, because I think a lot of people manage to stay active. But, you know, really, for most people, like the only way you could really stay active was to do stuff either in your like garden or home or like my flat yeah. from my perspective or go for a run, <laughs> which a lot of people absolutely hate. So running yeah, is really good but also it's like really stressful on your body so a lot of master swimmers you know a lot of master swimmers are very good runners but i guess a lot of master swimmers also can't run and um, because it's so weight bearing yes. it's like x amount of times your body weight every time you land on your foot so that's like a lot of joint mm. stuff and like even for me and i'm quite young so i find it sometimes quite hard mm. if i don't warm up or cool down properly so but yeah i think it's just staying i active. think it's is like really important yeah yeah it's, it's it's important also for the mental aspects as well isn't it just to just to keep uh just to stay motivated is the word i'm looking for because I, yeah. I think you're absolutely correct if you can't do nothing for two weeks yeah i mean I'm, I'm a bit like that when i'm on holiday to be honest like i love going away on a holiday and chilling out but i still always take my trainers with me because i'm like yeah. there will i know there will be a day where i wake up and i've just got to like burn some energy i've just got to go for a little jog and yeah. especially if you're kind of going on a a season uh, like a beach holiday abroad i love just like running along a promenade because like it's, it's yeah. great just like to see a few more views and stuff like that and it's um you know sometimes you only go out for a 10 15 20 minute jog before breakfast but it's just nice to just to keep the mind fresh as, and feel like your body's kind of still working as it should do and then um and then i really do feel like when you go back to the pool it's like you've never been away and like it might it might take you a session but that's yeah. fine yeah for sure i mean i i mean i went to so i went i think in like late june i went on a like work conference which i didn't really do any exercise which was fine because it was work it was very intense i was really exhausted and then went to sicily for 10 days and obviously it was too hot to kind of actually go out for a run like people yeah do yeah. anything really intense but we did a lot of hiking we like walked everywhere instead of like take transport mm -hmm. and we kind of did some hikes up some kind of kind of hills some rocks so that was like pretty good i you know did 300 meters of sea swimming <laughs> in my bikini nice. that, that is enough for me I Very think. Cool. but yeah um <laughs> so i'd like a tiny <laughs> tiny bit of activity but it was actually just really nice to get away from pool swimming Mm, yeah i'm really glad you said that because i feel like that kind of segues nicely to the last thing that i, I do want to talk about which is back to this kind of conversation around volume and, and as i say what i don't want to do is get into a debate again about high versus low volume or anything like that because that's not really the intention of this it's more off the back of actually um hearing a few people recently one being sunny uh the swimsuit guy who came on the podcast recently obviously to talk about his programs that he now offers master swimmers or coaches if they're if they're looking for, yeah. for a bit of inspiration for their club sessions. and he talks about the idea that if you want to swim fast you have to train fast um and he's been doing a few polls actually on his twitter recently more around yeah. age group swimmers he's been asking the question like as a as a parent or as a coach how many if you've got say for example a 15 year old that swims a 61 uh, 100 freestyle if you want them to go under a minute how many sessions a week do you think it takes and he gave everybody the option of like one to two sessions a week two to four six to eight and most people went really high and then yeah. he basically said um, interestingly most people have said six to eight i can tell you it's one to two because yeah. it's actually more about the quality and i think I think he kind of backed that up by saying he's got a few swimmers himself that are around that age that mm. have just gone you know into the 50s and they don't train a lot and i think his point is it's about training at speed and 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 then also uh obviously those that don't know about this podcast inside with brett hawk it's yeah. a brilliant podcast i'd recommend it um fantastic he gets a lot of the pros on he had cam mcavoy on just recently who obviously was victorious in the 53 yeah. and cam had retired from swimming um came back to, came back to training had literally what over a year off with no swimming at all decided that he wanted to focus on, on the sprints 
um, and then just did a totally new, un- quite unique way of training. Um, but I guess my point really in all of this is we kind of have this um, mentality that like 50 meters is a sprint but maybe like 200 meters is like middle distance, but really that's still only a couple of minutes worth of swimming. So you, all right, you might not be sprinting at max speed and max capacity, but it's not like the equivalent of going out for a 10 K run. So do you, do you think generally there should be a shift in mentality right across the board with swimming where we start seeing swimming more as a sprint sport other than those who do marathon swimming? Yeah, I think, it kind of frustrates me because a lot of people, a lot of non-swimmers are like, swimming's really boring, it takes ages. It's like, no, it doesn't. Like 400s are less right. than, you know, now less than four minutes. And it's kind mm. of like, yeah. And I mean, I was like having this chat the other day with some like boys from my club and they were saying like, I think like, you know, like Dan, who was on the podcast was saying um, that, I was kind of asking like why he was saying that like no one like over the age of like 26 has made like a world final in a distance free event. Um, and I think when we think of when swimmers think of 1500, it's such a long way for us. But then when you compare that to like, I was kind of thinking, you know, why, why aren't distance swimmers, why aren't distance free swimmers, like 15, 8, 1500 free swimmers, like older, like, but then you think in comparison to like iron distance, that's like hours and hours that you're spending exercising at like Mm. a certain intensity. And so swimming is short. And I think, I think it is more of the like sprinty, sprinty sports. um, Yeah, yeah, I agree. Rather than um, like a distance sport, like say like, yeah, like triathlon. Because that's obviously going to be mm. the exercise for like at least an hour. Obviously, like the five k, ten k open water, like how they do it, I have no idea. But that yes. is a, that's a long way. That's not normal. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. But but also it's also it's it is like a different sport, like isn't it? And yeah, and therefore absolutely. it's a completely different way of training. And and one of the reasons, and another reason, sorry for for kind of wanting to talk about this was. So my cousin is a top class runner, uh, and he's yeah. actually recently been um, running running for GBs. Uh, only a couple of years oh, wow. younger than me, so he's like late twenties. Yeah, and um, yeah, he's absolutely fantastic. And his speciality is the five k. Yeah, which he runs on thirteen point something minutes, which is absolutely crazy. <laughs> um, absolutely. yeah, it's so impressive. Wow. But but he um he obviously runs with an athletics club, and yeah, I was having this chat with him about volume, and and he was saying that. 800 meter track runners which is which we often say in swimming is the equivalent to doing a 200 meters swim yeah um he's he said you would never get get them guys going out for long jogs because yeah it doesn't relate to doing an 800 and i guess um i guess that's to my point really is that a lot of us maybe traditionally in the past have seen say a 200 um even a 400 we've seen that as being like our distance so you therefore need to swim 60k a week in order to be able to swim that well but i just think well actually a 200 is around two minutes a 400 is around four five minutes it's do you really need to do all this volume just to so again it's do we need to flip our mentality to being more kind of sprinters really um a set that we used to do in an old club was that was um and, and this one kind of drove me a bit mad really great for fitness but not great for wanting to get faster at swimming. And therefore, I suppose, I guess uh, that depends what you want as a swimmer when you go club training. But we used to do a lot of like 10 100s mm. on say, 140 and we'd be swimming them on 118, 120, something like that. Yeah. So I guess it's that thing of if you're just doing repeats of hundreds, swimming it on a, on a round 120, how is that getting your body ready to try and swim sub 60, for example? It sort yeah. of doesn't really feel like it correlates. Yeah, I think like I think for general aerobic fitness, I think like you know sets of hundreds with a short turnaround is like really good. Um, but then I think if you're if you're training for uh, you know a two hundred or a hundred, like you really want to be doing pace work. And I know sometimes mm. sometimes we'll do hundreds off you know quite a tight turnaround, and that'll just be like you know creating like really good aerobic base, and it's all focused yeah. around that and like keeping fit. But then sometimes, like, on a Friday, I've known that we've done, like, you know, 2100s off, like, 215, but, like, hitting at each one, like, as fast as you can go. And, like, I know the boys in my club, 
100 like 100 and 200 swimmers they will do like 2100s off t- like two minutes sometimes on a friday like yeah I, I i i think it's quite hard i think i'd go off like three mm, minutes. Yeah, it was. It's but, very um, tough it's very tough to do but they will they will do that so they'll they'll do like 2100s off like 145 to two minutes and they'll like hit like you know 61 62s like the whole way because they've mm. got like that big yeah. rest and yeah we do i think at trafford as well like we do a lot of focus pace work so we do a lot of 75s and 50s at 100 or 200 we don't do 75 at 100 pace we'd only do like 25s or 50s at 100 pace but we um we do like 75s at 200 pace and i feel like 75 is that that amount where like it hurts so much because it's that extra 25 and you have to keep it up because yes, after the first 50 that's kind of where you do drop off in in any swim um but yeah we do a lot of like 75s at 200 pace and then you have kind of got to be hitting yeah. your 200 pace like every single time to get the rest that you need to go off the time so mm-hmm. We do we do a lot of that. Um, we don't do a lot of ten one hundreds because I think we'd all be very unhappy. So we do kind of yeah. sort of I'm really <laughs> yeah, I'm really pleased to hear that you do that kind of training there because that's exactly the kind of training that I guess I'm talking about really because yeah. you're you're doing swims that are at a two hundred race pace, for example. So that's exactly how you prepare your body for a two hundred meter yeah. swim. Um, I mean, there, I'm sure there are lots of clubs around the country that are training in that sort of way, or people individually maybe that are training that way. But I also know from experience there are clubs that don't train in that way and are probably a bit more of an old school approach of just like it being very, very aerobic, um, but actually quite moderately paced swimming, but a lot of it for an hour. So it gets you very yeah. fit, but it doesn't necessarily get you very fast. And I just think it's an interesting, uh, interesting conversation. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you've got the kind of benefit of zone two training. So that's like a robe that's kind of like, you know, mid aerobic training, um, low to mid aerobic training. And that builds up your kind of your all your mitochondria, which makes kind of swimming yeah. faster, easier. Um, but you do need to kind of spike it with intensity because you'll never, ever know what it feels like to swim that fast. And that's what yeah, you know, exactly. Bob always says to us as a club. He always says, like, you know, we need to do this pace work because you need to know how fast your target time is and how how fast you need to swim. Mm-hmm. Um, but you yeah. can't just rely on that. You need the base to back it up. You need to be able to, like, turn yeah, off that quickly and do that an extra 25 like, at the same pace and not die. And then you need to be able to, like, rep yeah. the 75. So mm-hmm. that's kind of what we're taught to do. And I'm getting better at it. It really hurts. Yeah, <laughs> that, that just makes perfect for it's, sure. It's, it's um, well, listen, you yeah, no, I know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's painful. And like I, that feeling where your like, stomach just starts knotting up on the last few and you think, I actually genuinely feel quite sick. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's weirdly like a, a nice yeah. feeling in a, way, in a weird way. Yeah, I, feel, I think there is such thing as swimmers high, but it's a lot like more horrible than runners high. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah, it's yes. very, very painful. Um, oh, yeah, the thought of it, the thought of going back to club training next week, I'm slightly put off now, but I'll, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Um, All right. So you're off to Club Santa very soon. Um, so it sounds like you'll be having a nice break from nice break from life, but I'm sure you'll be getting plenty of swimming in, which is lovely. Are you going with the club or are you just going on your own with your family? Or I'm going with my parents. My parents I'm so lucky. I'm literally the luckiest girl on earth because my parents will still put up with me um even though i'm 26 <laughs> years young um but yeah i'm basically i've i know i've like witted on like every lit every single episode i've been on i've witted on like um i am finishing a phd i am basically finished now yep. so um i'm almost mm. like ready to hand in so my deadline's not until the end of september but i thought i'd just get it done as soon as possible so i can go away at the end of the month and kind of have like few weeks just chilling with my parents and my boyfriend which will be really nice um and yeah I think my plan is to just kind of swim for enjoyment do some cross training maybe just do maybe more meterage but less like obviously not 
all of it at high intensity like I do at Trafford so I'll have like a couple of like hard sessions but then do like a lot of like easy drills and skills like underwater kicking we've been like really focusing on that in training because most of Trafford Masters underwater kicking is atrocious and um, they won't kill me for saying that they know I'm right we we are bad at it we're just a lot of like get to the surface and go but we should really be working <laughs> on dr- drills and skills so I think I'm just going to do like lots of drill skills technique stuff like that and yeah I think it'll be really nice and then hopefully I'll like come back refreshed and ready to race also you can't spot your mistakes in a, like a large document unless you go away and then come back so that's my excuse yeah I agree yeah no 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 I agree I'd um as a journalist and editor I'm somebody I always have yeah. to step away from my work and then and then come back and see it the next day and, and that's when I spot things because you get um uh writer's blindness yeah, otherwise totally. especially if you're doing big theses like, I so also to, to I also can't spell like, I've lost the ability to spell words as well so I will like spell <laughs> everything like in the wrong order because I'm typing so fast so it's just yeah I think I think that's probably for general fatigue that sounds like yeah, fatigue to me. It sounds, it sounds like you <laughs> need like a- going on like what is this word <laughs> why is it here yeah it's like I'd, I'd, I'd definitely I'd, need some yeah I like sent it off for corrections and then like someone had said um why have you put like lots, lots here? Like, why is the word lots there? And it, it's tools. I'd like meant to, sp- I'd like meant to spell tools. And I was like, oh, okay. how, how have I done this? But yeah, and also I'm really excited to race this season as like a free woman with like the deadline gone, mm. the document handed in, no more. St- well, stress, a little bit of stress, but less stress. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting to see how you get on not having other things going on that are yeah, like up here. kind of t- eating your body that you don't realise, you know, mentally and everything like that. And yeah, yeah. it'll be really interesting to see how you get on, actually, well, because um, next, yeah, you'll be Yeah. Well, no, it'll just it'll just be it'll just be good to watch for sure. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, it was lovely to speak to you and um hope you people too. enjoyed this episode. And if, if you've got thoughts around types of, you know, ways of training that really work for you, obviously let us know. And um, yeah, thanks a lot and see you all soon.